Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. Day 102 of the current situation or day 2 of the new situation, depending on which you prefer. That's up to you. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Big thanks to all of the people that supported the channel through a small donation. You can see your name here. Thanks to all of the people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's have a look at some of the news that has caught my attention over the last couple of days. And it's all about outbreaks here in Spain at the moment as there have been outbreaks in different parts of the country. We'll have a look at a map in a minute of just where these outbreaks have taken place. And the population is a little bit nervous with regard to the future situation, considering that many people are trying to plan holidays or trips to other parts of Spain and don't want to get caught in one of these outbreak areas. Now, let's have a look at some more detailed information about this. And we can see here that Spain has reported 12 active virus outbreaks. The most concerning situation is in Aragon, where a spike in infections among fruit pickers has forced three counties to return to phase two of the de-escalation plan. So 12 active outbreaks around Spain. Now let's have a look at the map to see exactly where they are. So apart from Aragon or Huesca in particular, we can see here that we have three different colors on the map, the lighter bluey green color, the darker blue color, and of course, yellow. Now the lighter bluey green with the red dots, of course, those are areas where there have been outbreaks. So we can see one in Galicia, one in Valladolid. There are a few in the Andalusia region, one also there in the Valencian region, and one also there in the Canary Islands, as well as a few others, as we can see in the north of Spain, in particular this area here in Aragon, which as we said, has gone back to phase two and the yellow meaning a return to phase two. So let's have a look in some more detail. We can see here that in the Canary Islands in Las Palmas, the arrival of a boat with 14 infected people in Fuerteventura has quarantined the other 25 occupants of the boat. And in Andalusia in Malaga, Algeciras, Granada and Córdoba, there are cases. So for example, in Malaga, nine positive cases at a Red Cross Center in Malaga City. There are 100 people in active follow-up. And the last one here in Córdoba, in the Pastas Gallo factory in Carpio, five positive cases have been detected among its workers who remain asymptomatic. So there you can see that map of where those outbreaks have been around Spain over the last few days. And one of the reasons for this is that there are a lot of asymptomatic people around that basically just don't know that they have the virus and of course feel no need to get tested. We can see here that asymptomatic, careless, and a false sense of security, this is the cocktail that precipitates the new outbreaks here in Spain. So carelessness, another big problem, and that false sense of security that a lot of people have, let's be honest, that this is a problem that's gone away and we don't have to deal with it anymore. I see that a lot in young people, especially teenagers. Teenagers seem to be very careless when it comes to social distancing. Now, I don't want to put every teenager in the same boat, but the ones that I personally have seen and reports from other people definitely point towards teenagers or young adults that really think that this is a problem of the past. And of course, that was one of the big problems that we had in the beginning of people passing the virus on to elderly members of the family and vulnerable members in our society. And let's be honest, when you are young, you take more risks. And that's going to be one of the big problems going forward in order to contain more outbreaks. Now, there's been a lot of talk in Spain, a lot of rumors about the possibility of going into a new lockdown. And I see that Argentina in South America is planning one for next week because the situation there has got out of control again. But the government came out yesterday and said that they have no plans for a new lockdown despite fresh outbreaks. But the government says that it could resort to emergency powers again if spikes in infections are not controlled. Now remember that this has been the plan of the government all along, not to go back to a serious lockdown that we had before, but rather control the particular areas in which outbreaks occur. And that's what we can see is happening in Wesker, as I mentioned before, that went back into the phase system, phase two, and they will stay that way until the situation clears up. Now remember that one of the key factors 
factors of phase two is that you can't leave your local area. So people in that area, maybe some people have gone there on holidays or some people have gone back to their villages, are going to be stuck there until the health situation gets better. So that could be one of the problems that we face in the future. If we do travel to an area, let's say for example we go to a place like Valladolid, which is in Castilla Leon, and there is an outbreak there, maybe we will get stuck. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen regarding that, but again hopefully these outbreaks will be limited in the future. Now some news regarding beaches here in Spain, in particular the ones in Andalucía in the province of Cadiz, and it is that with all of these social distancing rules in place and crowd capacity rules, a lot of beaches in that particular area have been closing around lunchtime because they become too crowded. We can see here that Spain is already closing beaches before they're too packed and before most Britons have even had a chance to get out there. Now this was an article yesterday from the Daily Mail, a little bit sensationalist in my opinion, and I went to investigate it a little bit further. And of course we can see here that several beaches in Cadiz were closed due to the large influx of bathers on the first summer weekend. Around two in the afternoon, the Civil Guard was forced to restrict access to Bologna Beach in Tarifa, Cadiz, due to the high number of bathers that it registered and with the aim of avoiding greater crowd. After Bologna, it was the municipality of Barbati that decreed the closure to new bathers of the beaches of Zahara or Caños de Mecca, La Cala de Aceite in Conil de la Fontera has also been closed. Since that time, it was already difficult to find a car park in all these areas, so the agents have positioned themselves next to the national access roads to avoid crowds. So as we can see, beaches are closing earlier than expected, but of course, if you get there before 2 p.m., you should be able to secure a place on the beach in Andalusia this summer. And be warned that beaches are being closed. So my recommendation would be if you're planning to come to Spain this summer and you want to go to the beach, get there early. Now the questions keep on arising on how Spain is going to fix its economy after that three month lockdown. The Bank of Spain yesterday came out and showed the Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez that the true key to raising income is raising VAT. So here in Spain VAT called IVA, I-V-A, and it is that vatted value tax that we get on all consumer goods. The easiest way, the Bank of Spain says, to increase incomes, but apparently it isn't one of the ways that the government is looking to increase revenue here in Spain. So the Bank of Spain providing another option there for the government to increase its coffers. I particularly wouldn't want to see an increase in VAT. I think it's one of these easy taxes that governments pass on to consumers, and I'd rather see different ways of trying to raise income like trying to foment some type of business activity or helping young entrepreneurs start businesses and get that part of the economy up and running rather than increasing taxes. But I'm not predicting any grandiose plans from this government that we currently have in Spain here at the moment. Now, if you're like me living here in Spain and you've had trouble understanding what's been going on over the last 100 days, especially regarding the data and the statistics that the government have been putting out, you're not alone. We can see here in one article from El País, the problem Spain's outdated data methods have caused during a 21st century pandemic. The Spanish government has proved incapable of supplying clear and accurate figures about the coronavirus crisis, despite the need for such information to track and control the epidemic. So finally, it all makes sense outdated data methods. And it wasn't only Spain, it was a lot of other European countries that don't have the most up-to-date technology when it comes to analyzing data. They said that countries like Singapore, South Korea, some other Asian countries are a lot more advanced when it comes to giving statistical data in order to keep their citizens informed. And here in Spain, we can see over the last few weeks, it's been an absolute shambles, the numbers that the government have been putting forward. So hopefully they'll take note of articles like this and improve the way they release statistics and data to the public. Now, let's have a look at some of the comments from the last video. First one here from Martin. This is a worldwide problem. All political parties should pull together and not just try to gain political points. Proud of the way the population has reacted to the rules of this pandemic, the new normal will work for the locals, but not so sure tourists will feel the same. Unemployment is a worldwide problem and probably most countries will go into recession. For me, always health before wealth, we live in La Nucia in Alicante. Only two new cases in our Marina Basia area in the last two weeks, so the virus is still about. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Martin. You are right. It is a worldwide problem. We can see that there is not a country in the world that is not affected by this. Of course, I've heard that Vietnam is a place where this doesn't really seem to be a problem, but here in Europe and the Americas, a serious problem 
and not to mention China. I also agree that political parties need to pull together. That's one thing that we are not seeing here in Spain. The opposition parties are being quite irresponsible in my opinion. We need to pull together. We need to work as a country and that goes for every democratic country in the world. One of the things that I was happy to see in Australia was that the opposition party was working with the government to make sure that everything went smoothly. But now you can see cracks starting to appear down there as the states are starting to fight amongst each other. And here in Spain, as I said, it has been an absolute nightmare from a political point of view. The first month or so was okay, but the last two and the last few weeks here have been terrible. But politicians now seem to be on holidays, so hopefully things will calm down a little bit politically over the next few weeks. One here from Soalino, fantastic video again, Stuart. Very informative, accurate, and pleasant. Congratulations from a Spanish follower. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Soalino. Gracias y bienvenido al canal. I know that there are quite a few Spanish followers out there watching these videos. They like to practice their English. They like to see the way foreign people interpret the news here in Spain. So thanks for watching, and I hope I can keep it up. One here from Anthony. Hi, Stuart. What's the situation with holidaying to the Canary Islands from the UK? Some friends have a booking for early August. Very informative channel. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Tony from Manchester in the UK. Yeah, hi, Tony. Thanks, and good question. Spain is now open for British holidaymakers. Another question is whether you can get a flight to the Canary Islands or not. I know there are people coming to mainland Spain, people arriving in Malaga, people arriving in Alicante, people arriving in Madrid, Barcelona, some of the mainland airports. I did read that one tour company is starting flights with the Canary Islands from the UK again on the 7th of July. So if your friends are coming here for August, they should be okay. But uh, as I said, Spain is now open for business and uh, people from the UK are allowed to come here like other people from European Schengen area countries. One here from Danny. Hi, Stuart. I, like others, have no idea where the Spanish government get their information from. I live in Galicia and I can tell you in my little town, the population has more than doubled. Most of the newcomers not wearing masks. Our safe little haven in the hills is under threat from inconsiderate idiots. Yeah, Danny, thanks for the comment. I also don't really know where the government gets their information from. I suppose they have to rely on experts who are feeding them that information. And of course, as we saw before, the statistics are a a bit dodgy and all of the data that they have been putting out not really up to date compared to some of the other more advanced countries around the world, especially in Asia. And uh, about the problem of people coming to your village, well, that's something that we all have to get used to, especially if you live in one of these smaller places here in Spain. People that return to their village or small town for the summer months, people from that town have probably gone to live in some of the bigger cities in the area, maybe come to Madrid. And of course, when the school holidays start, people flock to those places. And we can only hope that they adhere to the social distancing and all of the new rules and regulations in place. As I said before, bit of a problem with teenagers and that younger generation and uh, it's going to be a problem throughout Spain this summer I imagine. One here from Tom, what happens if a hotel has an outbreak of the virus? Will it lock down as it did in Tenerife at the start of the pandemic? Will residents have to go through the same situation? Yeah, Tom, good question. I think that is what the government is planning. If there is an outbreak in a hotel, they're going to shut it down like they did in Tenerife at the beginning of all of this. I think Tenerife was one of the first places in Spain that had a virus outbreak. And of course, the authorities shut down that particular hotel. And that, as I said, is what they're planning to do. Will it affect all of the residents in the local area? Well, it depends how far it spreads. If they can contain it to the hotel, which of course might be possible, but if it spreads to a local population, there could be some areas in Spain that do go back into a phase system as we have seen in Huesca this past week. But again, hopefully outbreaks will be contained to smaller areas. One here from Fergus. I remember watching at day 14 and thinking it would all be over after that. Yeah, Fergus, thanks for the comment. I'm sure that lots of people were watching after day 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 22, 23, 24, 30, 31, 32, 33, and thinking that it was going to be over soon. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case. It dragged on and on and on and on. And as we can see in other places of the world, as I mentioned, Argentina going back into a lockdown next week, apparently. 
Hopefully that's not gonna happen here. Hopefully we're gonna be able to move forward, but it's gonna have to be done with caution. I think I'm gonna keep on numbering these videos as I have been doing, just so that people have a record of where we're at. But unfortunately, it seems that this is gonna be around for a long time to come, but uh, I hope I'm wrong about that. One here from Jillian, 100 days. Thank you, Stuart, for all the information. You made it a lot easier to bear the very strict lockdown we all experienced. I do hope you will continue to talk us through the next few months, as I think there will be many more obstacles for us to maneuver through. Yeah, Jillian, thanks for the comment and glad that you found the information useful. I am going to continue with these videos, maybe not as regular as I'm doing them now, but I'll try to continue putting out videos on a regular basis, trying to keep people informed of what's going on. And hopefully those obstacles and barriers that we have been maneuvering through over the last few months become easier to manage. And uh, again, hopefully that lockdown is a thing of the past. One here from Julie. Hi, Stuart. Great to see you have 30k subscribers. Great channel, looking forward to your Galicia vlogs, Julie Cornwall UK. Yeah, hi Julie, thanks for the comment. I forgot to mention that we hit the 30K subscriber mark the other day, so we'll get some more applause there. <laughs> Thank you very much to everyone out there, those 30K subscribers. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching the channel over the last few years. And hopefully we'll be able to get to more milestones in the future. It's been a long road. I never thought I'd get to 30,000, especially when I was back at 500 or 1,000 subscriber mark. And uh, good to see you're looking forward to some of those travel vlogs, which will be coming up shortly on the channel again. So stay tuned. And finally, one here from Auto Addict. Well done, Stu, for making it to the century. I've been here from the very beginning and the last 100 days have been emotional. Gracias, amigo. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Otto, and thanks for your support over the last 100 days. You're right, it has been an emotional ride. I, for one, have been on an emotional roller coaster for the last 100 days up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm sure that many, many people have gone through a similar experience. It has been a difficult time, difficult for people to wrap their heads around what's going on. And I'm sure that the next 100 days are also gonna be challenging, but I'm sure we will be able to get through them as we have got through these last 100 days. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.